Okay, so in this video, we want to find the derivative of the function y equals x squared minus x. So if you recall, the derivative for any function can be denoted as dy over dx. It can be found by taking the limit as h approaches 0 of the slope of the secant line, which is of course f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So, well, the function f is the original function, so this is f of x, x squared minus x. So all we really need here is f of x plus h. And this can be obtained by making a substitution, right? x is a variable. So when you say f of x is x squared minus x, this goes for any x. So the variable x can be replaced by any other variable. In this case, we're interested in replacing x by x plus h. So we'll have x plus h, all squared, minus, and here you have to be careful, minus all of x is replaced by x plus h. So all of x plus h is being negated. So you have to open up your brackets. Let's expand this out. So if you expand this, so x plus h squared, it will give you naturally x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Then here the negative, if you distribute it, gives you negative x, negative h. So now we have our f of x plus h expanded. We have our f of x. And again, h is the variable that approaches 0. So we have all the pieces. So we're good to go. So let's replace. So f of x plus h. minus f of x, and again be careful here, all of f of x is being negated. So when you negate this, you will get negative x squared, negative negative, so you'll get a positive x. And this is of course all over h. So let's clean up the numerator, let's cancel the terms that we can cancel. So we have an x squared, minus x squared, these two cancel. Then we have a negative x, positive x, these two cancel. And we're left with three terms. And what is key about these three terms that remain on the numerator is each one of them is multiplied by h. So let's factor an h from the three remaining terms. This will give us h times 2x plus, if you factor in h from h squared, you're left with h, and minus, factor in h from h, you're left with 1. Again, if you're not sure, multiply back, 2xh, check, h, h, h squared, check, negative h, check, all over h. But now we have a proper factor of h on top and on the bottom of our fraction, so it naturally cancels out. So we're left with a very simple limit. Quite simply, we have a single expression, no longer a fraction, and we have 2x plus h minus 1. And as we let h shrink to 0, then this term shrinks to 0, and we're left quite simply with 2x minus 1. And we have our derivative the derivative of the original function, x squared minus x, is 2x minus 1, which says, for any given value of x, the slope of the curve is 2x minus 1. And again, the slope of the curve is the derivative, which also is geometrically the slope of the tangent line. So let's write down what we have, and look at a few ways in which we can write the derivative of the function is 2x minus 1. So if you recall, 
the function was y is x squared minus x, which is also what we called f of x. And now we have one way of writing down the derivative. dy over dx, if we just go back here, the derivative of the curve is 2x minus 1. Or, we could also choose to write the derivative not as dy over dx, but if you recall, as f prime of x. This is an equivalent notation. This is the derivative. The prime means the derivative of f of x is 2x minus 1. And we can write the derivative in yet a third way. If we now make a substitution, right, so we can view dy over dx as a small change in y over a small change in x, giving us the slope of the tangent line, but we can also view it differently. We could separate the y with the d over dx. So we can think of d over dx as the action of taking the derivative of something with respect to x, and now if you view y as the original function, you can replace y by its expression in terms of x. So x squared minus x. So this is said as the derivative with respect to x of x squared minus x is simply, as we have found, 2x minus 1. And again it says that the slope of this curve is given by 2x minus 1. So let's now use the derivative in a special case where we want to find the tangent line to this curve at a specific point. So let's recall the two key pieces in this problem. So we have the function given by x squared minus x, and we just found the derivative to be 2x minus 1. So let's sketch the graph of this curve. And it's a simple curve as it's a parabola. Right? We have a quadratic polynomial. The constant multiple in front of the x squared term is 1, so we have a upward parabola. And we can sketch the graph more easily if we factor x so this will be x times x minus 1. And factoring leads us to the two zeros of this quadratic, x equals 0 and x equals 1. So this quadratic will cut through the x-axis at x equals 0 and x equals 1. So we can make a rough sketch of the graph of this parabola. Again, not a very nice sketch, but it will do. So 0 and 1, as we have found them from the factoring, are the two x-intercepts. And again, say we want to find the equation of the tangent line through the curve at the point x equals 3. Well, this is a line. So the equation, of course, is given by y equals mx plus b. And let's also insert in our picture the corresponding y-intercept. The curve is x squared minus x for any x. So when x is 3, we get 3 squared 9 minus 3 is 6. So the point on the curve is x equals 3, y equals 6. So there are two unknowns in finding the equation of the tangent line. The first is m, the slope of the line. The second is b, the constant term. So which one do we find first? Well, the easiest one, of course, is m. Think about this. What does this mean? The derivative of the curve is equal to 2x minus 1. This says that the slope of the curve, therefore the slope of its tangent line, is equal to 2x minus 1 for any given value of x. Here x is 3, so the slope will be 2 times 3, 6 minus 1, 5. So m is simply 5. 
And there is a very nice way of writing this. So let me write it here. M, the slope of the tangent line, is the derivative, so dy over dx. But we don't just want the derivative for any given value of x. We want the derivative specifically when x equals 3. So how do we write down that we want to evaluate the derivative when x is 3? So we use a vertical bar and we write bottom right corner x equals 3. This may look like a weird notation, but it means evaluate the expression when x equals 3. So let's replace the derivative of the function is 2x minus 1. And we want this expression, the value of this, specifically when x equals 3. So now we simply make the substitutions. We get 2 times 3 minus 1, which is of course 6 minus 1, which is 5. So the slope of the tangent line to the parabola x squared minus x at 3 is equal to 5. So we're halfway there. But before we move on, let me show you another way of writing this out. So evaluating the derivative at a specific x value. If you recall, we can also write the, the derivative as f prime of x. So the derivative again is a function of x. And now we want specifically to evaluate the derivative when x is 3. So we can write this also as m, the slope of the tangent line, is the derivative at the point of interest. We want the slope of the tangent line when x is 3. So we replace x by 3. So f prime of 3. And again, this is 2 times 3 minus 1, which again equals 5. So two equivalent ways of writing down that we are evaluating the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, at a specific x value. So now how do we find the constant term in the equation of our line? Well, we use the other property of the tangent line. Not only is the slope the derivative of the function at the point of interest, but the line touches the curve at the point of interest. So the line passes through the point 3, 6. So if a point is on a line, it must satisfy its equation. So we can make the substitution. So what we have right now is y equals 5x plus b. And the point x equals 3, y equals 6 is on this line, therefore satisfies the equation. So we can replace it here and solve for b. So y is 6 equals 5 times x, but the point is x equals 3 plus b. So we have 6 equals 15 plus b. So obviously b is 6 minus 15 which is of course negative 9. So the constant term in the equation of our line is negative 9. So we now have the equation of the tangent length of the curve, 5x minus 9, at x equals 3. And that's it.